Hi, my name is Jessica Espinoza and I'm the Fine Arts Professional Learning Specialist for Cobb County School District. And today we will be doing a lesson where we explore the picture book, Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed by Mo Willems. We will be examining the role of the author and the illustrator, and we will be discussing how you can take a picture book and adapt it into a musical for the stage. Sometimes, the author of a book is also the illustrator. Have you heard of Mo Willems? He's best known for his pigeon books, his elephant and piggy books, um, and my favorite, which is the one we're going to explore today, is Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed. Let's hear from Mo Willems a little bit about what went into creating this book. Naked mole rats are fascinating, interesting, and yucky to look at. And all of those things made me want to write a book about them because I knew that nobody else was going to write a book about naked mole rats because they're just so weird. And then I realized, hey, wait, Mo, you're also so weird. So it worked out fine. Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed is a story about a naked mole rat who, wait for it, get stressed. And what was interesting to me about that was it wasn't a story about a character discovering something. It was a story about a whole colony, a whole community discovering something. And that something is you can accept mole rats who are different from the mole rat that you are. Now we're going to read the storybook, Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed. And as I'm reading, I might be asking you to do some really fun things as actors and active listeners. I will be doing things like telling you to create statues. Now, statues are frozen and statues don't move or talk. And I might say something like, create a statue of a fancy mole rat. Three, two, one, freeze. And I want to see you follow along and do these things. All right, here we go. Naked mole rat gets dressed. There is so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked mole rats. But for this story, you only need to know three things. One, they are a little bit rat. Two, they are a little bit mole. Three, they are all naked. Well, they were with one exception. Wilbur, the naked mole rat who liked to get dressed. Hello. Ew! Yuck! What are you doing? When the other naked mole rats saw him, those are the things they would say. I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I get dressed, I can be fancy. Can I see you become a fancy mole rat? Let's see it. Three, two, one, freeze. Very good. I can be funny. Can I see you be a funny mole rat? Three, two, one, freeze. I can be cool. Three, two, one, freeze. I can be an astronaut. Three, two, one, freeze. When the others heard that, they said, Ew, yuck. If you like clothes so much, then why don't you open a store or something? Hmm. Naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. But Wilbur thought that was a great idea. Can I see you think that you have a great idea? Let me see that with your bodies and your faces. Let's look like we have great ideas. Three, two, one, freeze. Very good. The other naked mole rats did not. They did not think it was a great idea. They brought Wilbur to a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest, and most naked naked mole rat ever. Look at the picture, they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his total lack of clothing. Grandpa did look heroic. Can I see what it looks like to look heroic? Three, two, one, freeze. 
Grandpa did look regal. Three, two, one, freeze! But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Ugh, said the other naked mole rats. Don't you get it? Naked mole rats don't wear clothes. Why not? Asked Wilbur. Something had to be done. Can you show me with your body, make a statue of the mole rats telling Wilbur, something has to be done. Let me see it. Three, two, one, freeze. Good job. The naked mole rats marched right over to Grandpa and told him all about Wilbur. And then he asked, why not? Hmm. Grandpa was very wise. Can I see what it looks like to be wise? Hmm. He thought seriously about everything he had heard. Then he thought some more. What does it look like to think and think and think some more? Hmm. Finally, he said in a heroic, regal voice, Gather the colony. I shall make a proclamation. Show me that you have a proclamation to make. Three, two, one, freeze. Good job. When Wilbur heard about Grandpa's proclamation, he knew it was serious. A proclamation, a proclamation, a proclamation. But he had no idea what to wear. In the end, Wilbur decided to play it safe. Maybe not safe enough. Look, he wore socks. The others were so busy looking at Wilbur's socks that no one noticed Grandpa enter until he cleared his throat and proclaimed, <coughs> Fellow naked mole rats, I have never worn clothes until I heard Wilbur's simple question. Why not? Why not indeed? Do clothes hurt anyone? No. Are they fun? Well, they may not be for everyone, but this old naked mole rat wishes he had tried getting dressed earlier. Then Grandpa complimented Wilbur on his socks. As fast as his legs could take them, Wilbur rushed home. He put on his favorite outfit and he dashed back. When he returned, Wilbur discovered he was not alone. Much had been said about the day, but for this story, you only need to know three things. One, some of the mole rats were naked. Two, some of the mole rats were clothed. Three, all of the mole rats had a great time. No exceptions. The end. Do you remember how I told you that Mo Willems, he's the author of his books, but he's also the illustrator? Well, now we are going to have the opportunity to go into Mo Willems' art studio, where he creates all of his illustrations. And he is going to show us how he drew Wilbur the Mole Rat. So for this part of the activity, you're going to need a piece of white paper, drawing paper if you have it, a pencil, and if you have color pencils or markers or crayons, anything with color, that also will be great to have by your side. Have fun doodling with Mo Willems. All right. Wilbur is pretty simple. His head is a bathtub from the top. See, it's kind of like a rectangle, but it's curved around all four sides. See, and making a bathtub. And that is his head. Then we take my favorite number, number 11. Actually, you know, we had an extra digit. Number 111, even fancier. We go across and we have the teeth. We do two upside down letter U's, letter U, letter U, and then a line. That's, that's kind of like the 11 there. And then two dots 
for the nostrils, and then little dots for the eyes. And there you have it. It looks like Wilbur. Let me write my name, because then I'll know that I drew that later. Because Mo, one of the things you may notice about this character that makes him super tricky is he has no mouth. So I had to figure out ways to make the characters have feelings without opening their mouths. And the way I did that was with body language or silhouette. And a silhouette is if you were to darken in all of the character, then you would have a sense of what they feel like or they look like in a silhouette. It's a silly word, but it's the name of the French guy who invented it a couple hundred years ago. So there we go. The theme is going to be today. Oh, they were so fancy and silly. Nick and Morak get stressed. Let's doodle some clothes. You doodle whatever type of clothes you want. I'm going to start with a with a T-shirt, and that's a T-shirt. And maybe later I'll cut these out, and I can make paper dolls out of them. What I thought we were talking about while we're doodling these is, one of the things that makes drawings really fun is patterns. So let's doodle some clothes all with different types of patterns. Like this is a t-shirt that's polka dotted with one special dot. That's fun. All right, let's do a pair of fancy bell bottoms, which are coming back. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, there are a lot of things in this world you can't control, and bell bottoms being popular again is one of them. So let's do stripes. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's stripy pants. When I was a kid, I had to wear a lot of stripy pants. There was not much that you could do about it because those were the pants in the pant stores. Stripy pants. Um, let's see. I love, and used to really do this a lot, I love doodling fancy shoes. Andy Warhol used to do that. And look at this pattern. These are called wingtips. I don't know why, because you can't fly in them. But when I was in college, I pretty much only wore wingtips. And there's another way that I was different than other people around me. And my wingtips were always black. These are going to be purple. See all those little dots? Let's see patterns. And sometimes I like to just doodle patterns all by themselves because patterns are just really fun. All right, I'm going to sign it on this side because I know that today and then I'm going to make my signature a pattern too. Look at that. Well, yeah. Keep it here. Now, I'd like for you to continue doodling and sketching Wilbur and coming up with three costume changes for Wilbur. And I want these costumes to really create a story for Wilbur of a place he could go and a type of character he could become. And I'd like for you to write from the point of view of Wilbur. So it's going to feel a bit like a monologue. And a monologue is when an actor makes a speech about himself or herself through their own point of view and it's to be performed. <laughs> <laughs>